The sun was just beginning to dip behind the rows of neat, suburban houses lining Cedar Avenue. The day had been hot, but now the air carried the promise of a cool, comfortable evening. Sprinklers hissed across well-manicured lawns, and children laughed as they played, riding their bikes and scooters down the gently sloping street. Cedar Avenue was a place where everyone knew everyone. It was the kind of street where neighbors held annual block parties, borrowed sugar, and waved as they passed each other on their morning walks. Life was predictable, safe, and uneventful. But that evening, everything changed. It started just as dusk settled, with a flicker. The street lights that had just turned on blinked once, twice, then sputtered out. The hum of electricity, so constant that it went unnoticed, faded into an eerie silence. One by one, the houses went dark, televisions cut to static, and phones lost their signal. An uneasy murmur spread as neighbors began stepping outside, exchanging confused looks. Is it just me, or did everything just shut down? Asked Mr. Parker, a retired engineer, wiping his hands on his jeans as he walked to the middle of the street. He had been working in his garage when the power went out. I thought it was just my house, said Miss Carter, who had been halfway through baking a cake. But it's the whole street, isn't it? Within minutes, almost every family was gathered outside, standing in small groups, trying to make sense of what had happened. The air was thick with uncertainty. It's probably just a power outage, Mr. Parker said, trying to reassure everyone. Could be a transformer blue, or maybe the power company's doing maintenance. It'll be back on soon. But as the minutes dragged on and darkness fully enveloped the neighborhood, the unease grew. From the end of the block, a young boy named Tommy spoke up. I saw something earlier, he said, his voice small but steady. The crowd turned toward him. It was in the sky like lights. They were flashing. His mother, Mrs. Harper, shushed him. Tommy, don't start with that nonsense. She turned to the neighbors and forced a smile. He's been reading too many of those science fiction books. But the damage was done. A ripple of nervous whispers spread through the crowd. Could it have been a UFO? Asked Mr. Townsend, the widower who lived at the very end of the street. I've heard stories about things like this. Strange lights. Then everything just goes dead. The mere mention of something otherworldly set people on edge. Don't be ridiculous, Mr. Parker snapped, but there was a tension in his voice that hadn't been there before. Mrs. Keene, the local conspiracy theorist, chimed in. It's not aliens. It's the government, she said, pointing a finger to the sky. They've been watching us for years, keeping track of everything we do. Now they're running some kind of experiment, seeing how we react when they take everything away. Look around. It's just Cedar Avenue that's gone dark. Everywhere else is fine. Neighbors glance around at one another, unease shifting to suspicion. A half hour passed, then another. Darkness was now complete, and the quiet had taken on an oppressive quality. No one felt safe going back inside. People huddled closer, eyes darting around, as though expecting something or someone to appear out of the shadows. The quiet was broken by the sound of an engine sputtering to life. The Johnson's house, three doors down, suddenly glowed with light. They had a generator. Immediately, all eyes turned toward them. Well, isn't that convenient? Mr. Townsend muttered. How come they have power when the rest of us don't? It's a generator, Mrs. Johnson explained her voice wavering under the weight of all those stairs. We bought it after that big storm last year, just in case. But her explanation was cut off. How do we know that's all it is? Mr. Parker said, stepping forward. Maybe they knew this was going to happen. Maybe they're behind it. The crowd shifted, unease turning into something darker. 
They've always kept to themselves, someone murmured. Never too friendly, never one for the block parties. You think we don't notice? Mr. Townsend added, his voice rising, always acting like they're better than the rest of us. The Johnsons, now pale and trembling, tried to retreat into their house, but the tension on Cedar Avenue was mounting. It was no longer just a power outage. Now, everyone was looking for someone to blame. Just then, another flicker of light caught their attention, this time from the street corner. It was Emma Reed, the shy teenager who lived two doors down from the Johnsons, standing under a dim streetlight with her phone in hand. The screen glowed faintly, and the faint ping of a text message cut through the silence. How does she have signal when the rest of us don't? Mrs. Keene demanded, her voice sharp with suspicion. What is she hiding? Emma backed away, holding her phone close. I... I don't know, she stammered, but no one was listening. The crowd had shifted their focus to her. Maybe she's in on it, Mr. Parker said, eyes narrowing. Maybe they are. Accusations flew, faster now, fueled by fear and suspicion. Every flicker of light, every strange sound seemed like proof of some hidden agenda. One's friendly neighbors were now turning on each other, convinced that someone among them was responsible for whatever was happening. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, the power came back. The streetlights blinked on, the hum of electricity returned, and Cedar Avenue was bathed in light once more. The sudden return of normalcy left everyone standing awkwardly, unsure of what to say. But the damage had been done. Cedar Avenue was no longer the peaceful, friendly street it had been just a few hours ago. The neighbors, who once trusted each other implicitly, now looked at one another with suspicion, their friendships irreparably fractured. Later that night, atop the hill overlooking Cedar Avenue, two shadowy figures watched the now quiet street below. Their eyes glowed faintly in the darkness, but their expressions were unreadable. All it takes is a little push, one of them said, a hint of amusement in their voice. Fear does the rest. The other figure nodded. They'll tear themselves apart without us lifting a finger. And as they disappeared into the night, Cedar Avenue remained a quiet, suburban street where the seeds of paranoia had been planted and trust had been forever shattered.